Let us now study the implementation of function maximum that takes a list of integers and returns the maximum number therein. The maximum is undefined if the list is empty. So, in our implementation we have four branches. In the first branch, we handle the case where the list is empty. In the second case, we handle the case where the list only has one element, in which case the maximum number of a list with a single element is that element. So that's what we're returning. We're returning the first of the list. Otherwise, what we're doing is basically handling the recursive case in two um, subcases, right? The first case is where the first element of the list is greater than the rest of the list, in which case you return the first element. Otherwise, you return the maximum of the rest of the list. So pretty straightforward if you think about it uh, recursively. And what we see is we have this example where we, if we run it, I actually already have it here. And if I, I wrote two examples. First one, I have a list with um, five elements and the largest element is 10. And if we run this, racket max, you will see the maximum is, di is this and I can even change it just so you you believe me that anything that something is happening and if I rerun it I get a failure it says that the maximum should be 10 so similarly in the next example I have a list with even more uh, values including a hundred and a thousand and the largest element is of course a thousand so if I write a thousand and one I should see largest element is a thousand okay so max works uh, but one thing you may be uh, so actually, I could even simplify this. I could say length of, re of rest. I could say equal one. So if the list is has one element, then you return the first. Otherwise, it has more than one. So we take the first element, we compare it with the rest, of the maximum of the rest of the list, and if it's greater than you, you are in the first. Um, case otherwise in the second case where the maximum element is already uh, was already calculated in the rest of the list okay so we have this this is our implementation uh, the one we're seeing and one thing you'll see is that the function is really slow if you try to run it and I will do it here um, so if you look at max one max one so max one already has um, size of 22 so this is uh, creating a list with random elements, uh, a list with 22 elements, and it's the same uh, example. Sorry, max up. I don't know why count is here. We don't need count. Oh, we actually need count just to build a random list. Um, and then what we're doing is we're benchmarking, um, counting the time, how long it takes, and then we're printing some stats just to, so we have an idea. So if I run this, uh, racket max one, and I run it a bit, it takes a while. And then the list only has 22 elements, but we're running it multiple times just so we can take an average. And what we see is um, a list with uh, 22 elements takes 100 milliseconds to um, compute the maximum number, right? So if I incremented it to 23, let's see how long that takes sit here for a while I was still thinking okay so it took double the size so we just added one element and the type doubled and if we added one more you will imagine it will take even longer so this time we're going to make it even shorter so we'll try with 21 elements let's see if it's a quarter of this time <coughs> so I run it and notice it is a quarter of the time. So every element that we take, it doubles the time um, to compute the max. So this is a, a, a great telltale to figure out that the code we wrote is actually terribly bad because it blows up exponentially. Um, so we have these stats. Whenever we add an element, that we double the execution time. Uh, why? So we have um, an exponential going on, and why is that? Let's think about it. What's going on is every time you um, check if 
uh, you know, you, you hit this comparison, what you're doing is you're, comp you're calculating the max once. And then if this condition fails, you are returning the max, so you're computing max again. Right, so you're computing it twice, and then each on each branch you might compute it again twice. So you're getting an exponential blowout. Right, each each branch you take, you can take two more, and each branch you take, you take two more, and that's why you're always doubling because the list has random elements, and they might be, you know, you might be always hitting the else branch, and therefore always creating these two things. So, how could we uh, simplify this code? Or, or rewrite this code so that you don't do these two calls, right? Ideally, we just need to compute it once. The problem is here that we have this conditional, and in the conditional we are using, we need the value in both branches, but we don't need them in these two. So what could we do? Well, there's one very simple thing we could do, which is to break it down. So we, we get the else case, and in the else case what we do is we can define another variable, a, a local variable, just defined in this branch, it just exists in this branch of else. And we do another conditional that checks if the first element is greater than the rest of the max, then return the first element. Otherwise, return the rest of the max, right? And what we can see is that now, the time it took us to compute um, the max of 20 elements, now we can compute of a million elements. Wow, it's so fast. A bit longer, but you get the idea. So let me look at max2. Max2 has exactly this implementation that we, say, that we saw. And if I run it, max2, notice the million elements. Let's see how long it takes for on average. Yeah, and it takes 112 milliseconds. If I if I do 100,000, it does it in 3 milliseconds. So as you can see, it takes quite a... It's way faster. Okay, of course, as you would expect, right? Because now the we only compute max once, which means now the recursive... Uh, the Sorry, the complexity of this function is now linear on on the size of the list which is great so this is great so we saw how nested variables can help uh, cache temporary results which can really improve performance All right so we saw these two things we saw that we can use a nested definition to cache intermediate results this helps not just in, in terms of performance, but it might also help us understand a bit better what's going on in terms of the code, right? So you don't have these very nested calls within calls within calls. So it might be a nice practice to just use them just to organize your thoughts. Um, and we another thing we noticed was that we found a way of identifying repeated computation and cache them in this uh, local definition. Okay, and that is it. I hope you had fun.